Good evening, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tecton Zoo. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Uh, these bears don't mess around, do they? We have a baby already. Look at this little dude, he's so cute. Um, what are we doing today? Today we are building a pygmy hippo habitat. And the challenge is, can I squeeze some pygmy hippos into the tiny little strip of land that I've left myself next to this sun bear enclosure? So if you look at it, it is bound in on, on three sides. We've got the sun bears, the waterfall, the boundary of the zoo, and this path. Um, so it is going to be a challenge to fit it all in. So whilst I sort out some of the terrain here, let's talk a bit about the concept for this enclosure. So if you remember when we started the jungle uh, a few episodes ago, we built this beautiful waterfall and put a river in here. And the idea being that wherever you are in the jungle area, you can, you've got a sight line to the waterfall. So anything in this habitat that goes next to the waterfall needs to not get in the way of that sight line basically, which means everything needs to be built at or below the level of this path. So I'm just filling in with some concrete the gaps between what's going to be the big enclosure in the center of the jungle and the enclosure that we're going to put the pygmy hippos in. And we need to come up with a design that is going to sit uh, below the level of the path. So um, we've got the winter quarters, which I mentioned in the last episode. We're going to need a decent sized space for that, not as big as for the bears. I checked out a lot of pygmy hippo habitats in zoos around the world and man those guys get shortchanged. <laughs> I mean I know they are pretty small hence the name but it's not like they're a, a meerkat or something they are pretty sizable still and um, their indoor courses tend to be really small. Um, unfortunately in Tecton Zoo whilst I would like it to be a lot bigger their enclosure here is going to be pretty small as well. Um, it's going to have an indoor pool and then a sleeping area and a, an area to join those two things together and obviously it'll be heated but um, it's not going to be huge. I've sort of like I say hemmed myself in a bit with this path. If you remember all the posts on the side of the path are custom. They were placed to begin with one by one and then eventually I worked out a way of doing it uh, three at a time but it took a long time and um, <laughs> I'm not doing it again basically so the path is staying where it is plus I really like the shape of the path uh, so we're building this low uh, modernist structure for their winter quarters so as you can see it's a it's not tiny I've certainly seen smaller in real life but ideally it would be it would be bigger we've got a glass dome on the roof so that when the guests are on the path next to it if the hippos are indoors then they can see them swimming about in their pool briefly experimented with an orange roof that did not stay there for long for obvious reasons um, and then we put a window in here as well by their sleeping area so they get lots of light so even though it's inside with the glass roof and the big window and the door should be um, should be still pretty bright and airy in there and this is where their their pool is going to go so I just lowered the terrain here so we can get the water in and then we're going to surround this with concrete before we do that we're going to put one of the bio roofs in that we like to have wherever we can in the zoo. Uh, that's uh, Vigoga's ladder from the workshop again at the back there. That's on the it's on some of the staff buildings. I've used it again here so that the staff could get up to the roof to sort the plants out, water them, etc. We've got a little area by the ladder for the staff to be able to get to the plants without trampling all over them. You can see we are right up against the border of the zoo here. Um, very little room for manoeuvre. I really wanted to, to squeeze a habitat in here because I want that effect of being surrounded on all sides by, uh, by jungle. The middle area is going to be really densely planted. I'm thinking of having cassowaries in there because I'm a big fan of those. They, look, uh, they just look really cool and it's always interesting to have a bird of uh, that size. Especially when you know they could um, do some serious damage if they wanted to. I spoke a bit last week about future plans of the zoo, um, starting to solidify the plans for the next area of the zoo that we're going to expand into, which is going to be a giant area for reptiles. I've got a building which I found quite a while ago now, um, which is just absolutely perfect for having reptiles in. It's a real building, um, exists in real life, and it actually looks like some sort of giant 
reptile or, or it's reminiscent of one anyway. As soon as I saw it, I just thought that would be perfect for a reptile house. So that is going to be the dragon's lair. That is going to be where we have Komodo dragons, which I've never used before. I'm uh, excited to use those. And it's going to be surrounded by separate buildings for crocodiles, mainly the saltwater crocodile, which is another animal that I've never had in a zoo, especially now that they actually dive as well. I'm really looking forward to getting those in. I think I mentioned it when I built it back in episode 10, but the waterfall in this habitat is heavily influenced by the videos of Mike Sheets, who made some amazing videos about landscaping and planting in Panit Zoo. If you haven't seen those, I'd highly recommend it. Back onto the inside of the habitat now. I'm going to surround the pool with concrete using a bit of a rotational symmetry here. I really struggled to, to fill this in initially. I had to cut, cut a load out of this part of the video, but um, Eventually I managed it and um, it's pretty seamless now. Um, it's actually quite cool to have a man-made circular pool. I don't think it's something I've ever done before, if I recall correctly. We've got some steps, etc., so the hippos can get in and out. And they're perfectly happy using this. So uh, it took me a while to get there, but this is working really nicely now. The building itself was a bit low as well. I didn't realize, but the keepers couldn't actually fit. <laughs> they couldn't get in, couldn't get through the door. So I raised it up a little bit, but it still sits nice and low, still barely visible from the other side of the, the paths, which is what I wanted. These are some of the new Africa pack pieces, which I'm using to make the stairs here. So many great pieces in that pack, really makes it easier to build um, certain things with all the plaster pieces that we've got. The inside of this enclosure is gonna be a lot more realistic than um, what I normally build. All untreated concrete, pretty basic. It looks a lot like some of the pygmy hippo uh, indoor enclosures that I've seen in real life. And the guests will be able to see them splashing about in their pool, looking through the uh, through the domed roof. You have to see the little pygmies uh, splashing about. Uh, we used to have pygmy elephants, uh, or dwarf elephants as they were called. Um, they lived in uh, various Mediterranean islands and they essentially shrank due to um, island dwarfism as it's called. Um, they were about the size of a person, like a metre and a half. I wish they were still around, that would be so cool to have uh, pygmy elephants as well as, uh, as pygmy hippos, but uh, sadly not. But anyway, back to animals that aren't extinct. Uh, we're going to put some more um, of these bars on the wall. And this light, this Australian light, which is supposed to be a wall light, but I really like it when you sink it into the ceiling. It gives you a new option in terms of lighting. And that's the winter quarters pretty much done. We're going to move now to behind the waterfall in the enclosure. I wanted a way to see, or, or to have rather, where the water actually comes from. So I'm going to put some pipes in where the water is being pumped up out of the ground and into the waterfall. Uh, obviously it's not a natural waterfall, so um, the, the water's got to come from somewhere. So this is pretty simple, I mean it's on the outside of the zoo. No one's ever really going to see it, so um, it's probably not my best work, but um, we just put some pipe work in and a few rivets, etc. And then move some of the rocks in the waterfall around so that the pipes go in there and there's uh, you can see where the water is coming from and where it's going to, to actually power the big waterfall. And now the final stage of the build, which is to finish off the externals. So I've made the pool by the waterfall a bit larger, so the hippos have got more swimming room. Because it was a little tight, because I want a few of them in here. Uh, I think it's three adults is the maximum. So I wanted a bit more space. And then I need a bridge so that the keepers can actually get to this side of the river, because at the moment uh, they can't. So just a really simple one with the um, African hut base, I think it is. And then this enrichment item, the mud bath. Uh, love this enrichment item, hate the wooden border. So I spent ages hiding it with rocks and terrain. And it's I think it's really worth putting a lot of uh, time into to sort of disguise these habitat items so they don't they just look like they've been plonked down randomly into the enclosure. So I cover up all the wood with rocks. What I used to do would be to, like I'm doing with this long piece, just cover up each bit of it, 
but then basically instead of having a wooden border you just have a rock border <laughs> which is I mean it's a bit better but it's not really ideal so um, the way I'm doing this one is I'm using little bits of terrain to cover up some of it and then rocks going in different random directions to cover up other bits of it uh, and then the odd rock here and there covering up quite a lot of it like this one and the end result uh, should be leave that up to you to decide but it should look pretty seamless like it's just an area of ground that's the uh, you know that's had water etc poured onto it to make it into a mud bath rather than this sort of octagonal um, wooden structure with mud in it yeah it looks pretty decent quite happy with that a bit more terrain painting to sit it in and that's it and then just a few more enrichment items to put in I'm going to use the uh, fronds of leaves, I don't know what the official title for it is, but I really like using this in doorways because the animals get sort of automatic enrichment whenever they um, walk in or walk out of their house. And then some food enrichment on the other bank of the river. And then we're going to do a little final bit of landscaping, so I want to put some more trees in. But I mentioned that the sight lines at the start of it, so what I'm doing here is making sure that this tree doesn't obscure view of the waterfall from anywhere uh, in the jungle uh, which it now doesn't which is nice and then we're going to put some more low-lying plants in around the rest of the enclosure put some of the new African grass in obviously can't make an enclosure without that anymore um, and then a load of vines on the walls to soften the, the, um, the fairly harsh white walls of this enclosure this is a much more um, utilitarian structure than the ones that I normally build because the main focus of this habitat is obviously the outside area with the river and the waterfall etc. So this is more designed to sit at the back of the enclosure. I didn't want to make it just sort of untreated, grey, browny concrete like I did with the sun bears because it is, it's going to be much more visible. It's a much smaller enclosure and it's much closer to the front of it. So you can't just make it disappear pretty much like I did with the, um, with the sun bears, it is going to be visible. So I've made it white so it's more attractive. Then we're going to put some um, giant rhubarb under the path to fill this gap in here. I saw some of this stuff in real life at um, Knowsley Safari Park a few weeks ago. It really is impressive, which is not something I ever thought I'd say about rhubarb, but um, it's not just called giant for a laugh, it really is huge. Um, and it's a very impressive plant, it takes up a lot of space as well, which is useful. I'm sinking a few vines just into the base of the waterfall and finally some underwater plants so there's a bit of interest under there um, there's the African grass don't forget that and that is the pygmy hippos done uh, I really hope you like the enclosure uh, the outside especially is um, possibly my favorite out of all the enclosures that I've built so far next week I think we will be starting the new area of the zoo for all the reptiles that I mentioned earlier so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that stick around for the cinematics and thank you so much for watching 